Hello, Galaxy! I'm Chris Perillo, and you've tuned in to another live video that I am producing. And tonight, I will not be alone. I mean, here, I will be alone, but uh, virtually I will be joined by John Adams, uh, producer of the Super Awesome Geek Show. Uh, I, I vlog his apartment at the time when he lived in the Seattle area. Now he doesn't. Uh, and uh, we were going back and forth about the Rise of Skywalker. Not, you know, extensively, but uh, I did my reaction video as, as long as that was, and that was a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, subsequently, I had, had seen it at least one other time, uh, as well as uh, picked up the Rise of Skywalker Visual Dictionary, which, as far as I'm concerned, is mandatory uh, if you, uh, you know, want to dive deep into any of the, one of the, the films that are produced or shows or anything that they produce. Uh, I, I say mandatory because... Um, this is, uh, it's visual, right? Just like the films, just like the shows, right? Um, so, uh, I, I have this on hand, and, I'm, and I noticed something on the back that I, I also want to remember to get into here. Um, actually, before I, before I forget, I'll get into it now, uh, just to make sure that everything is broadcasting just fine. It looks like it is. Hello, CJ. Um, this character here, uh, Rothgar Dang, right here. His description, let me see if I can find it here. He was on Kajimi, uh, very briefly. And at the end of the film, a side on Athano, I don't know if you caught that, the Crimson Corsair, who uh, just appeared in uh, this episode of Resistance, this recent episode. Let me see if I can find a, a description. John, I don't know if you caught this, or anybody if you caught this, but come on, where is it? Dude, I know he's there. I know he was on Kajimi in the bar. Zori, Babarik, Dio. No, 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 come on. Where is it? So the description of this guy is incredible. He, uh, like a Karelian who's basically uh, like a bounty hunter who's basically done a variety of upgrades to himself over the years. And the description reads almost like he was... Oh, now, what page were you on? Like, he could be Dengar. Like, this this Rathgar Deng? Like, it, it could be Dengar. I'm not joking either. Uh, let me get, oh, if I can find it, where is it? Oh, man, Mustafar, Jedi Scripture, Ray. No, it's not at the beginning. Is it at the beginning? No, I guess not. No, that was the entrance. Okay, so, uh, come on. You're right there. Okay, hang on. You know what I should have done? Uh, I should have gone to the index, because uh, I can look it up by, uh, by letter here. Rathgar Deng. Wait, so Deng, D-E-N-G. Uh, Dand, Death Star, Dang, Rathgar, 137. That that was just too easy, right? You know, I have to make everything difficult. Okay, here we go. Kajimi City, city Inhabitants. So, uh, Rathgar, Dang, sorry, not Rathgar. Um, Rathgar is an old, experienced Karelian bounty hunter who is likely operating under an alias. Okay? He has been subjecting himself to cybernetic replacements in a poorly planned bid to live and work forever. As age began slowing his reflexes and dulling his senses, Rathgar turned to black market surgical clinics to replace damaged or wizened old body, par or body parts with ones that would give him an advantage in his dangerous trade. Poor decision making has led to a ghastly appearance. So, is this Dengar? Could this be Dengar? Could it? Could it possibly be? Uh, don't know! Not, 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 uh, not really, uh... Not really, uh, not really sure what to make of that, but uh, there will be spoilers in this review. Uh, naturally, I assume everyone's had time to see it. I, I want to see it one more time, uh, certainly when uh, Diana's brother uh, is visiting. We want to try to see it in 3D. I think we've got a couple of uh, passes that we can use to go see it in 3D. It would be Jedi's first 3D movie, so that'd be a, a fun little experience, I think. Um, so I, uh, I, I was having back and forth conversations with John, and you know. I, I, I I I guess we this is probably going to be a bad review because I think we think very similarly, like incredibly uh, uh, like minded in, in terms of the way we've seen this film and the way that we've kind of accommodated a Star Wars media. Which isn't to say that if you didn't like the film that you're wrong or you're bad or you're not a fan. Like that's that's not fair. Uh, I would never take that away from anybody. I I will also say that I don't understand why some pe some people are are as disappointed as they are, because it's not me, right? So, I, But I'm like, okay, man, if it wasn't your thing, it wasn't your thing. And the only thing I can, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, think of that, that might cause that kind of disruption is if you, um, you know, see media 
specifically like this this type of media, right? That that's not just one film, uh, but a, a trilogy, if if not a part of a nine movie uh, saga. Uh, what would you call it? the Nufagi? 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 Right? Nine movies? Nuf? Nufagi? I may have coined a new word. I don't know. Maybe that is a word. I have no idea. Uh, either way, um, you know, if you believed that a certain character was this way, and then it turned out that the film that's produced made the character not that way, there, there's a division, right, in terms of how that, you know, um, uh, 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 how that plays out. Should it have played out one way or should it have played out another way? I mean, the way I look at it is like, this is just me. It's my opinion. So it's just my opinion. Uh, it is what it is. It was what it was. You just got to take it for what it is. And I said this when The Force Awakens was released. I was like, you cannot effectively judge this movie. And I said this. You can go and watch the, my Force Awakens uh, uh, review. Can't judge any of these movies in this trilogy without seeing all three of them. And, and I feel the same way about the characters and the backstories and all that. Um, as, as much today as I did when I said that, uh, you know, back, back then, uh, the rise of Skywalker, um, is still out in theaters right now. Uh, and, and long story short, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to give it a grade. I'm not going to rank it, but I still like it. <laughs> like there's nothing I need to ruminate about. I'm like, I enjoy it. Yeah. I've seen certain people, you know, uh, you know, be very angry at the film and the filmmakers and like, uh, to what end? Like it is what it is. I mean, if you're disappointed, it's fine. You know, like, it's not your thing. Okay. It's not a big deal. Doesn't mean, I mean, it, you know what? I'm not going to get mad at you because you don't like Brussels sprouts. I really don't like Brussels sprouts. I have to eat them right now. But because we have them, so I have to eat them. We call them balls of yum, so that Jedi will eat them as well. Uh, but I'm not going to get angry at you because you don't like Brussels sprouts. Uh, <laughs> or get angry at the farmers. Why did you make them taste so bad? Pineapple on pizza, though, I will go, to, uh, I will fight to the death. It, it is it is an aberration, a crime <laughs> against humanity. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give John a call. I wanted to you know give this a few minutes to make sure everything was going okay. And uh, here we go. I'm going to call John right now. Pull him on speakerphone, theoretically, and we will talk. And I have to everyone let me know if you can hear John okay or if you can't. <laughs> I can hear you okay. Oh yeah, you can. Good. That's a start. All right. I'm yeah. turning my. I gotta turn the TV down so I don't get the the weirdness. Yeah. Okay. You, there you, we go. You can get the delayed hand gesticulations and whatnot. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I thought it would be good. Um, you know, to to bring someone else in in terms of like a review because I don't know how to structure a review. I'm not a really good reviewer. Right, I either like it or I don't, or I talk about the things that you know I want to talk about, or I don't. And you know, it, it just it's it struck me as is something that I think would be uh, you know nice to be able to explore um, the, uh, 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 the the review with someone else who has seen the film several times is a is a Star Wars fan steeped in lore. Uh, whether or not you see the, see it the same way that I do, but it turns out that I think we see the Rise of Skywalker uh, very much as a, a a, a good film. Uh, I mean, for a Star Wars movie, a good movie, like a, a summer blockbuster, yeah, I, right? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I squeezed in a sixth of viewing oh. just the other day, oh, so <laughs> and uh, and I definitely want to go again. I, I really like it. Yeah, you know, the thing that I think, you know, for for for. for for all the people out there who say it's it's fast paced and the, the cuts are just so dramatic, I'm like, yeah, but that's what makes it that's what makes it fun. It was just nonstop. You know, all recent movies are that way. It's not. You go back and look at a movie that any movie that was made in the '70s. Like, go look at um, what's that? Like the the famous car chase one. You know, uh, uh, with the with the Mustang in it. You know, like. Compared to today, where you watch like okay. Fast and the Furious or something, that movie is, has a lot of long, boring shots of people walking down hallways that take like twenty minutes to get down the end of the hallway. It, so in today's movies, they cut that out. You get the idea that he's going in the door and walking down the hallway in like one second. You don't need to see the entire ten minutes of him walk down the hallway. So it's just a different way of making films. Every film is cut fast to the, in today's market because we got people who just want to 
we know what's going on. We're, we're, we catch on. We don't need to see that part. Well, you know? but at the same time, I, and, you know, I'm going to drag Rogue One into it. I enjoyed Rogue One, and I know I've said this so many times, it could be a drinking game. Um, Rogue One is an example of where Disney should have taken that story and made it a live-action TV series like The Mandalorian. Like, it... Yeah, like... I agree that, like, now in hindsight, it probably would have worked better as a short, like a one-season one, one season series. Make it, like, six or eight episodes, and we could have flushed out and filled in a lot of stuff and made it really cool, and then just end it. Just have it be six or eight episodes, and it's over. Right. But, but... I've heard you say that a number of times, and I'm like, I find nothing wrong with Road One. It's fantastic. I love it from start to finish. I don't know what you're talking about, Chris. <laughs> the character. Okay, okay. So let's okay. Let's segue. The character development, right? It's the character development, and I didn't have it. I didn't have a chance to latch onto the characters, and this is actually a really good segue because the the thing that struck me about the rise of Skywalker from the crawl from the beginning of the crawl all the way through um, to uh, to the point where uh, it uh, uh, Poe had landed uh, and and with with Finn with the 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 I guess the the message for Leia and and Ray. Um, it was like nonstop yeah. action. Like you, I couldn't even breathe. I was just like, oh, what? This is a thing. Oh man. Oh ha. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it, but but the care. But uh, okay. In terms of character development, I felt that the chemistry or that that relationship between Ray. And uh, uh, Poe was on fire. I'm just, I'm just like, yeah. man, because they're arguing, right? But they obviously know each other, but they're still just getting it off their chest. And I just, I felt that was very palpable because I knew the characters, right? And I know where they've been, yeah. and they really, honestly, haven't had a lot of screen time together, right? Uh, you know, up until the point where they met well, at the end of the Last Jedi. Yeah. Well, the other thing that I thought that was really great about that scene was that. You knew that they were they were also slightly joking around with each other in the back, like they had had this conversation before. Mm -hmm. So they, you, you know what I mean? Yep. It was like it was like all oh, a joke, but also true. It's, you don't know, you know how it's it perfect. You got that group of friends, but John. Yeah, you that's got that, that group of friends. That, that to me, was, you know? that's what was missing in Rogue One, and 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 where I didn't fe I, I didn't know the characters enough. Now this is something that I have also said. I believe that it's possible the Cassian Andor series with K2SO could resolve some of that a great deal. Yeah. You know, even having a Jin backstory could go a long way. Uh, not that Felicity would necessarily, you know, enter the fray again. So, you know, th th that to me, we have a chance in, in this in this movie, we have a chance for uh, the, the three primary characters, Ray and and Poe and uh, and Finn to um you know, real, you know, really do their thing, and this is where I think a lot of people got upset because, unfortunately, other characters did not get as much screen time. And and I don't, I mean, I think we've even gone back and forth on this. I enjoyed. Well, go ahead. I I gotta say, like, I think that every character in this sequel trilogy, okay, as a whole, they had the screen time that was needed to allow them to fulfill their whatever purpose they had for those main characters. Let's face it, the main characters were Finn, Poe, and Ray. Right, well, and then, and everybody well, else Kylo. Everybody there to drive right. those... Right, and Kylo, yeah, right. Yeah, of course. And, the, the, and the heroes Kylo, and the villains, Solo. right. Yes, I'm, I'm saying heroes. Let's look at the heroes, yeah. I'm saying, first, yeah. you know, in a sense. But I'm like, it was those three, and everybody else was there to further their story. Yeah, I said the exact same so, thing. You know, well, because Rose. It, but, but not, but not, not necessarily to take away anything from those characters that were in it only a short time. Right. But it's like, why is anyone complaining that Greedo didn't get more screen time? You know what I mean? Like, or, or like, I right. Don't know, well, like Admiral Akbar. You, you know, know it's, like it, Admiral Akbar only had a couple lines, it, it, but he was an awesome character. There, there were so <laughs> many. You know, I mean, there. Are, I know there are plenty of opportunities, and, and ultimately things go one direction. But I felt. Um, that that it was night. I loved Rose, so like I, I have zero nothing against her at all. I, I I don't understand why some people, you know, have said the things they said about her or the actress or um, Kelly Marie Tran or or Ryan Johnson yeah, or anything that, that, that was vitriol. Just, that but, was just pure being mean, right? That but was because 
childish. You know, it's but the thing is, that, what, but the, what they didn't understand is that Rose effectively brought Finn to this the the realization that he may not have arrived at otherwise. Like that was yeah, her absolutely. role. I mean, that, that I mean, not and she was the heart of the is the heart of the resistance, which is why it made sense that she was with Leia in the film. And I know I'm not sitting here making excuses, but I'm saying. Like, her role in The Last Jedi was basically to bring Finn to th the realization that he had to pick a side, and he already knew the side that he wanted to pick, but he, he lacked that confidence, right? But by the end, you know, he's defeating yeah, Phasma, and yeah. he said, yeah, rebel scum, right? It wouldn't have happened he without still, Lowe's. Until that moment, he still wanted to run away. Right. Even when well, he woke up, he like, just... That's what he was doing when he met Rose. He and, then, and then Rose, yeah, he was ready to basically commit himself to the cause at, at, the, at the Last Jedi by flying the skim speeder into the into the, yeah. the laser, yeah. and and Rose again saved Finn. So I don't, I, I, I'm not, I would have, would I have liked to have seen more Rose in this movie? Absolutely! I, I would have loved to see everybody more. I mean, like, I would, and, and John, here's the thing I'm going to say. I, I guess there's a longer, a potential, not a longer cut, I'm not going to go into the release the JJ cut or whatever the hell that is, but um, I could have easily sat for another hour. Easily. Oh, me too. Yeah, me too. So, you know, yeah. I, I... I would not be opposed, I would not be opposed to them <laughs> releasing on Disney Plus, like a longer version or something, because I, because personally, here's what I want, I mean, this is a sideline, but I don't care how long a Star Wars story is. I want them to actually cut together the Mandalorian with no edit, no, like, you could do the chapter title where it was like chapter, you know, the sin or whatever, but, right. like, cut out the beginning and the endings and just give me one four-hour long story that I could just sit down and watch right. from beginning to end. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and still have the episodic versions, but just put it in, I don't know, in the extras See, or something uh, yeah, I on think... Disney Plus, just say, if you want to watch it uncorrupted. And you've got four hours to waste. Go ahead right, and do right, it. right. You know, like because well, because I I like to see it in one long arc. I think it would make a great story. It's just with no interruptions. You know. So I like the film. There was there there were no moments where, and mind you, I also like the Last Jedi. So it's not like, you know, oh he like he hated the Last Jedi, therefore he likes the Rise of Skywalker. I liked all three. Like I, I think out yeah, of I, out of the three, I think the Rise of Skywalker is my favorite. I I I'm not, I'm not sure. I haven't really I haven't really um, categorized them as far as favorite stuff. Because you know what happens with me? That changes daily. Yeah, I know. I will. I because I because I I like I I thought that the Last Jedi was on the bottom of my list, and then before I went like the week before I went to see Rise of Skywalker, I watched the prequels one through three, the, the classic trilogy. I watched. The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, and I think like the very next day I went and saw The Rise of Skywalker. So, but when I watched that Last Jedi the day before seeing Rise of Skywalker, I was like, really, the only scene I don't like is when the Fafnirs get loose on on Channel Bite. I don't like how it looks when they're running through the city and all that. I was like, so I have one one scene. <laughs> In the whole movie that I don't like, so what's the big deal? It's right. not a bad movie. I did. I I, you like, know, honestly, I, I I feel like a bad Star Wars fan <laughs> because I there's very few things that I will dislike to the point of like not liking something. You know what I'm saying? Like I just, I, I I don't have a yeah. hang up on it. And and, and, it and ruin the whole movie, right? It's just one little thing. <laughs> but, so, but but and and, and to, to their credit, for some people, I'm not I'm not taking away from someone else's feelings or somebody else's experience. If you didn't like it, you didn't like it, and you didn't like it for whatever reasons. You didn't like it for whatever reasons. We can disagree on um, how it played out or or the value to that to the to, to the Raider story because I feel that there are some arguments that could be seen from a different from a certain point of view uh, as as positive or dovetailing where it, it, it made, it, it made sense, maybe not on the surface, but a, 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 at a deeper level. So, you know, yeah. you know, it's, it's kind of like, um, uh, some people have been upset because of Ray's lineage in, in the, in that, in the, in the, the, the whole thing had been set, the stage had been set that Ray's a nobody, which, I mean, if you want to believe that, okay. But if there's one thing I've learned, like in, in Star Wars specifically, is 
expect the unexpected. Like, just because it's gospel truth well, now doesn't mean that it's going to not change in, 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 in some future episode. Well, here's the thing on that. Whether or not Ryan Johnson wanted to, wanted to go that way, he very well could have changed the, the story for it when he did Last Jedi. I don't know what happened behind the scenes. But I will say that when Force Awakens, before Last Jedi came out, before Ryan Johnson had a finger on anything, okay, when it was just J.J. and Daisy Ridley, The Force Awakens was just coming out. People were talking about Ray's lineage. And I remember in an interview, Daisy said, nobody on the internet, nobody anywhere has guessed who my real father or my real heritage and parents were, okay? And she said that that it's so shocking that she doesn't expect anyone to get it until the third movie when we reveal who it really was. Right. So, so J.J. had the plan that she was a Palpatine when he did Force Awakens. And I don't know if Ryan, Ryan very well could have said, I'm throwing that out the window and making her a nobody. But when J.J. got the chance to do the third movie, he went back and said, well, that was just because they were in hiding and they, they chose to be nobody right. to try and keep her away. You know what I mean? You know, and, and this is this is also where I have to... back to his original idea that she was a Palpatine. And I have so to remind everybody... Mind, she's always been a Palpatine. It, it, it's fantasy, for one. And yeah. two, you know, so some people expect people to behave a certain way. Right and, and and follow our mores and our ethics and and I'm not saying it's right and I'm not saying it's wrong, but I did see someone basically say it was a joke to say that Ray's parents saved her by basically selling her to Uncar Plut. I'm like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I'm a parent, and 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 my God, I never want to be faced with a, a Sophie's Choice, right? Where yeah, you know yeah. you've got one really horrific decision or another. Almost equally horrific decision, only slightly less horrific. And, you know, if... And we don't know anything. Someone nicknamed him Brian. I don't think we have... Uh, Brian Palpatine. We have no idea who the, who the son's name is, right? It's inconsequential. <laughs> so I'm just Brian. going by Brian. Brian Palpatine. I saw it in a tweet. I laughed. I'm like, that's pretty funny. Um, so, you know, we don't know anything. And we don't necessarily need to know anything. Or, 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 or the motivations. But if he did not... If he believes strongly that the only way to effectively change Ray's fate and not have her succumb to the dark side is to dis, you know, basically eliminate any possibility that she's going to touch any Jedi Order. You know, she's on a remote planet, like yeah. knowing nothing, and, yeah. and, and 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 all the way down the line where people say, "Well, wait a minute." Palpatine first says he wants the he wants her to be destroyed, and and if he was controlling Snoke, the, and he wanted her destroyed, like wait, but then he wants her to live, right? But why does why does he change his mind? I'm like, because Palpatine does that, like he does it. He'll say one thing, but he goes with the flow, like he, that is Palpatine's yeah. modus operandi. Well, and 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 the part of it too, though, is you got to remember his reaction when when he had both Ray and Ky some of this stuff. I think. He's learning as he goes along, even himself. Palpatine right. comes off as, as all powerful and knowing everything about the Sith, everything about the dark side. Actually, he comes off as saying he knows everything about light side and dark side. You know what I mean? He's like, I am the all powerful force user. Well, and uh, but but he didn't when, even know when, they were when when he has Go yeah ahead. when he has those two locked in the in the in the force. Yep. Yep. All of a sudden, yep. that that pulse. Yep. Them, Yep. And he has a shocked look on his face. Yep. Like, what the hell just happened? You know? And then his fingers kind of grow back. Yep. It's like, oh my gosh. Yep. This is like a dyad in the force. Yeah. You guys are something that I've only but, read about but, or heard right. about. But he changes seen, his mind. You know? He changes his mind. And then he... So, he just decides to suck the life out but of him. But you know? that's what I'm saying. He's going to go... He's He's evil. He's not like he's yeah. married to the concept of evil and destruction and, and ruling everything, right? That's it. That's that's it. Like, and whatever's going to help him achieve his goal, he's down with, right? Or whatever he feels is going to keep him that way, he's down with, right? And and so, yeah. is it well, you know, does he, he really want to save Ray or destroy her? You know, we we don't necessarily know. We just know that he wants both, to win. Depending on the moment. <laughs> So, it's you know, both, depending on that, the and, and that was, you know, that was the next thing, like the, the, at the beginning of the film, right? 
which I guess was on Mustafar, like when, uh, you know, uh, 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 Kylo gets the Sith Wayfinder, pardon, the Wayfinder, um, and then he goes to visit um, uh, Palpatine, um, I thought it was amazing when basically it was revealed that Palpatine was Snoke, or he's a puppet, I'm like, ha! Oh! You know, that to me, I'm like, it made, to me, that made so much more sense than Snoke came out of left field. Right? Because everyone yeah, wanted to know Snoke's yeah. backstory. Well, oh, it's Palpatine. Oh, okay. You know, I know it's fantasy, and it's make-believe, but that fits. That makes sense. Uh, because, you yeah. know, he, you know, Palpatine's back-building this Sith army, and this 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 fleet, and his, his own power. He's, he's, he's concentrating all this stuff. So, it made more sense to me with pa uh, Snoke... And I'm, so I'm very grateful for a lot of the decisions that Ryan made, um, you know, not the least of which is knocking off Snoke, because like it, yeah. it just it would it would have been way too formulaic if Snoke would have made it to the third film. Come on, we we all knew what was going to happen, but when he offed Snoke in the Last Jedi, I'm like, whoa, you know, that was just like, whoo, th this this change. I mean, a it, shocking moment. Yeah, yeah, like you weren't expecting it. And, and here's the thing. The other side of it too is, look, you got to understand. Like a lot of people don't get this, and my brother and I were talking about this because when, when I, I saw the movie myself, like two or three or three times, I think. Then I went with my mom. Then I went with my brother, and you know, it was like I'm seeing it multiple times because, like you, you take family and go, and new, a new family member hasn't seen it. Yeah. Well, let's go. You know? Yeah. But anyway, so like my brother and I got talking. Like we love. He loved the Emperor. Like, when he went into it, he's like, I'm going to hate how the Emperor comes back. If he's a clone, it's going to piss me off. But we get into there, and I get done with the movie. I'm like, what do you think? He goes, I loved it. He goes, yeah. I loved, from the moment you saw Palpatine, yeah. like, he was scary. Evil, was scary, yes. Where it was like, that's a horror movie. Yes, yes. You know? And he was like, he goes, it gripped me from the beginning. Goes, oh, I man. I had no idea uh, how it was going to start. Oh, uh, it was, was so, like, I didn't uh, know it was going to Exactly. Way, you know, oh, it was goes, so. Oh my God, gripped, it, so haunting. It gripped us right from the beginning. Yes. And you gotta think like that is not a clone. If you were to make a clone of yourself, why would you have your eyes all milky white, your face right? Broken exactly. Off, and your fingers all broken. Yeah. Your fingers were broken and gnarled. Some of them weren't even all there. It was like down to the bone. So why would you make a clone that's all crazy like that? No, that was his original body and. The electricity that he had shot out of his fingers burned his fingers off. And <clears throat> what they did is they somehow collected his crumpled and barely clinging onto life body. And with Sith magic and technology, all those tubes, there were tons of tubes and these like liquid filled syringe like looking right. things that were plugged into him. He was like barely alive. He was clinging onto life. And the only thing keeping him there was that technology and the Sith magic. And, and probably the center of the dark side that well, was on that but planet. Think about it. It was like he was so desperate to live and control but that he, that's what he put himself Yeah, in. but he had he that power. He couldn't have done that, anything. He had that he power. He couldn't have done anything physically. But, so that's why he made Snoke. No, well, he had to have a uh, body. Yeah, true. So he created Snoke to be the puppet that he could use to go out into the universe and craft his return you know what i mean yeah i didn't even think about it from that angle but it's you're right because he physically couldn't do it he right he couldn't god so he i didn't even think of it body. that way it and made it sense to, wow that know? yeah that really makes sense to me now i mean that's that's what i'm saying is like it made sense to me but that 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 sound logic for for what happened and how it played out but you're absolutely right yeah. You know, he, you know, because he had, that was the, the ability to cheat death, right? Or what some, you know, people would consider unnatural, right? You know, the... Yeah, it was, the, he, no, he, that was totally unnatural. It, it was, no, it was on, he, but that's what I'm saying, he was on point. Like, let me put it this way. Yeah. I think, in my humble opinion, it makes, it makes way more sense for Palpatine to be in this episode than it would be not to have Palpatine in this episode. He's the Phantom Menace! Right, he 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 was yeah. the thing that started yeah. it all. Right, and 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 if anything, it, this is what you got to do. Did you watch? Uh, it was a podcast that Freddie Prince Jr. voice of Canon Jarrus, who was also in this film. Um, 
at the end when the the the, the Jedi are basically talking to him, uh, t talking to Ray. Yeah. Um, uh, he he went off like and he was saying all these people think they know about the Force, they don't know, and he's just like he's cussing left and right. Have you seen this? Have you seen what I'm talking about? No, I haven't. Oh, dude. No, you I got, haven't. no, no, no. You got, no, you got to look it up. It's like Freddie Prince Jr. goes off on the Force, and he's like, "You think you know?" I'm like, "You don't know." Any, you know, he's just ripping everyone. Like, <laughs> no, no, it's hilarious, and and the podcast hosts are laughing too. It's hilarious because he's saying, you know, George Lucas knows the Force, and you know, I worked side by side with Dave Filoni, and he knows the Force because he learned from George Lucas. You don't know, you know, you don't know. You think you know? You don't know. It's like you know, it's all about balance and it's all about you know you know uh you know you can't you can't control it right and they know if this with this deep darkness there's going to be an, an opposite light so like the, the way it played out with ray being a palpatine i guess by blood by heritage made more sense to me you know but i did not uh project myself onto ray as a character or necessarily see her agency is being tied to her lack of bloodline or being a nobody. The force is still for everybody. I don't think that message is gone. In yeah. fact, no. Finn is force sensitive. That no, is Finn, the yeah, Finn. Yeah, it, it's funny because my brother and I discussed that before. He he flat out said no way Finn knew the force could, could sense the force at least. But I said yeah because in the Force Awakens, Kylo. we had this discussion way back. Would Force Awakens yes, was out. I was like, we did. why else would Kylo stop and look at Yes, him? exactly. Mark's like, well, cause he, Mark's like, well, because he stopped shooting people. And I'm like, but how did Kylo know? That's the middle of a huge battle. He just stopped a laser bolt and captured Poe. And suddenly he looks over because he gets this sense like, why isn't this guy over here, that stormtrooper, what's he doing? What am I sensing from him? That's how I looked at that scene. No, and exactly. It's funny that now... Now, because he sensed Ray when she fell over, right? You know, my, my brother was like, my brother like hit me in the shoulder. He's like, "All right, you jerk, Finn Force sensitive." <laughs> uh, you know, like, <laughs> like yeah, this, you know, like but, but, your argument was finally over. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, but it takes three films because you know it's it's a story that plays out. Yeah, you know, over three films, at least that was the intent. When when Ray when when Kylo said that Ray's a Palpatine, like. I can't say that I was just like, oh, you know, but I was just, it caused me to, like, reconfigure everything. Like, Palpatine? Like, yeah. what? Yeah. But not in such a way that some people reacted, and they just, they hated it. And they wanted Rey to be a nobody. And, and, and I don't, I, is that a possibility for that to, to be as valuable as a story? If, if you believe that I'm not, trying to take away from that but i guess in in my mind ray is still very much self-made like is she to the point where at the very end of the film she decides that she is a skywalker because that is the family that she feels she belongs to and the family that took her in effectively yeah, yeah. or well to, to a large degree or was there right it, as opposed to a family that she well, was born into and that to me just it's, well, it's the other, that's the power the other side of it too is think about your upbringing like think about how a lot of people a lot of children who are nine or ten years old <laughs> you get left off with someone like unker plot now there's probably i mean in my mind there's no question that he probably beat her he probably treated her like crap he was always putting her down. You know what I mean? Like, what these these scoundrel guys are not going to treat this person in a loving, <laughs> caring way. So if there's a very easy and good chance that any child growing up into those situations is going to come out to be evil and twisted, you know, in some way. But yet she doesn't. She still comes out to be a good-hearted, well-natured person. Which, and so that's it's the balance. On her own. It's the balance. It's not, it's not following the bloodline. Right. It's still but her even, and not her own. Even with the, her own choice. But, but, but even with the blood greebles, right? You know, flowing through her veins. She still, that light, that light is so powerful in her that even as a Palpatine, it is the balance in the Force. Just like with, yeah. you know, the Skywalker line is just doomed like it's just it, it has been doomed and luke 
you know, and it, you know, it did what he thought was best, and you know, you know, all the way to the to to, to the very end, right? But even even then, the it, it, the the it, 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 you know, you, you had Anakin Skywalker, who was very powerful and and, and, and twisted, uh, obviously into in, in the dark side of the Force, and then uh, you know, Kylo, right? And and Kylo uh, having a chance to effectively save someone who cared about him. Now, I'm not going to say loved, because I'm not sure I, I can read that far into it. I know there are a lot of Raylos out there. Yeah. I'm not slagging them. I, I find the whole... I, I find it fascinating, like, the idea of Raylo. I'm like, I'm not sure. I'm like, yeah, I'm in, but I'm like... But, it's, a, it's fantasy. This stif, stuff, I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying love is perfect. Love is very imperfect. But the fact that Ben saves Ray at the end, he did something that Anakin could not. He did so, like you know, in many ways, when yeah. when, when when Kylo Ren says, "Let me finish what you started," right through you know th through your strength, right? He may have been referring to something else, but Ben did something that Anakin could not do, and that Anakin w what ultimately pushed Anakin to the dark side of the Force. So it was just it, it, to me that's. That's interesting. The fact that Ben saved Ray, Anakin could not save Padme, but Ben did something that his grandfather could not do, and effectively not finished what he started, but you know, did it the right way. Yeah. Well, and it's only it's really only because Ray did that to him. You know what I mean? Like she was she was going to kill him. Right. But then at that moment, in that moment, she realized that she couldn't do it. Like she herself, well, couldn't be that she, person. She, she sensed Leia. Be, she couldn't. Yeah, but she sensed I think, Leia. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of that too. I think there was a little bit of that also. Yeah, but I also, I mean, it's like she sensed Leia, and maybe, maybe that sensing of Leia made her realize, "I'm a Jedi. This isn't really the Jedi way, or this isn't my way," you know, or, or whatever. But something inside her changed at that moment. She was enraged. It wanted to kill Kylo, and then it switched like a like a light, you know. And she went, "No, this isn't the right thing to do." And so she saved him. And in that moment is when Ben comes back. You know, she doesn't really save Kylo; she saves Ben. Right. And Ben returns, you know. And then you have that scene with Han and everything, and which I thought was great. The lightsaber away. I thought it was. Oh, yeah. oh man, I'm but like. <sighs> I think that that's what that's what brings Ben back at the end. To be like, you know, I'm going to do the same thing for you. I'm going to save you. And if any one of us deserves to live, it's you that needs to carry on and, and live. So right. I'm going to give everything I have to make sure that you pull through with this. And so, I don't think she was fully dead. I think she was like in that moment right before death. I don't think he brought think? her back to life. Uh, I, I really uh, think that she was. I think she was I, dead. I, don't. I think she was, I think she was dead. I think she was mostly i think it was mostly dead you know? <laughs> she needed the chocolate covered uh walnut or whatever right. the heck that was <laughs> and, uh, but you know i don't know I, I, eh. so so but let me ask you this at the end he gave, he why, gave everything he had to bring her back so then know? why why is it because it's ben solo i mean it's a skywalker right but why did ben not appear alongside the force ghosts of leia and um, um, uh, Luke on Tatooine. I don't know. That's a, that's a good question. Someone suggested that, that, that Ben's spirit basically intertwined with Ray's. Like, in the moment he disappeared, Ray and Ben became one. I mean, it's, it's kind of out there as a theory. Um... But but you never know though. I, know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it was but it was you know that to me is just like why well, I, I do wonder why that decision was made, right? Um, it could just be choices because I I question why, like, you know, I like this idea like Chewie has the Falcon now and Poe sometimes flies around with Chewie like we saw in the beginning of the film. Ray ends up getting Luke's X wing, so I was like, oh, that's cool. Now that can be Ray's ship. Chewie can have the Falcon, whoever he wants to take with Ray. him, he can take with him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Ray has the thing. And then I was like, and Poe 
BB-8 is closed droid. Right. So now Ray inherits R2, so like R2 could go in the X-Wing, <laughs> and Ray and R2 could fly around in the X-Wing, blah, blah, blah. But then at the end of the movie, you see Ray show up with the Millennium Falcon on Tatooine with BB-8. I'm like, why? Why does she fly in the <laughs> X-Wing and have R2 with her? And R2 would make sense to go back to that hole, because that's where R2 came from all fun. Right. You know, like... BB-8 has nothing to do with the tattoo, you know, why is he there? Yeah, you know? I, I, I did wonder <laughs> about that because... That, it's those little things that, like, who cares, really? Right, you know, just, you, you know it's, you're thinking but, too hard about it at that point, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, but it's like it's just the decisions they made. So I think with Luke and Leia, it's just, in the moment, J.J. was like, it'd be nice for Luke and Leia to be there. Let's just put them in there. And he knew he, at the moment he wasn't thinking about about Ben. You know, he was like, I'll put Luke and Leia there. That'd be pretty cool. And then she says, hey, I'm a Skywalker, you know? Right. So it's just that, that the choice in the moment. And I know why bb 8s there, because he was the droid that was in this trilogy. So, of course, let's put well, BB-8 in the last Well, no, but no, I think there's, I don't, that, no, I think you know? it's deeper than that. Because, and I don't know why, but there seemed to be symbolism between the twin sons on Tatooine, on the horizon, and BB-8. And they looked... Yeah, his twin son. You know what I'm saying? They body. looked. It yeah, looked like a BB-8 yeah. in the sky. Yeah. So I don't know what that symbolism was necessarily, but I'm like, oh, okay, that's an interesting visual to make. It could be. Um, yeah. 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 You know. Be, um, yeah. But I. Not that it. It speaks. You know, deeply to the to the story or was the 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 pivotal moment or whatever. But yeah. No. I. I. Uh, oh, Good. I gotta go back to one thing way at the beginning. Finn did ask. Uh, Rose to go, and Rose said, "No, I'm going to stay here and work on this stuff with Leia." So right. he asked her to go. Yeah, but Italy, yeah, <laughs> but that was written. I'm that just, to be just, to I'm be just, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying. I'm to just be saying, fair, every opportunity to go. No, no. But, but to be know, fair, <laughs> to be fair, that was written. That wasn't like you know uh, <laughs> Kelly Marie Tran going no, you know. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I find, it's, honestly, the most interesting thing I found from The Rise of Sky, I mean, I've loved it, I loved it from beginning to end, everything about it, 3, and, and 3PO, I don't think, oh, yeah, 3PO was awesome, God, this was, I mean, I've seen 3PO from the beginning, right, this, as far as I'm concerned, 3PO, this was 3PO's film, like, zero doubt in my mind. And it's not even the yeah. moment that I thought was going to get me. It was every moment around it. It was just... Oh, I loved it. It was great. I just... I, 3 PO was I wonderful. Loved, you know what I loved? You know what I loved? I think you're going to say the same thing. I loved it when, when later on someone's like, oh, we got to go get back to Baba Frick. And he's like, Baba Frick? That's my longest friend. I've known him forever. I was like, yeah, I love that part too. Everything, everything that 3PO did. And honestly, I could, like, 3PO's guy, okay, he's got a part, you know, not a biggie. Yeah, he's a part of it, but, like, I'm telling you, this, three, he was in his stride. The, the, 3PO was perfectly written in this film. Perfectly. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, you Great. know, I, I liked how the Lando was involved all the way to the very end where you've got the illusion, and I guess it's, it's canon that uh, Janna is Lando's daughter, uh, or at least that was the intent. But like, I just loved that he said, like, you know, want to find out together or whatever he, he, he alluded to. Like, let's go find out who your parents are, where you, where you came from. Like, I thought that was, I just, I just, yeah, yeah, just, the, the, those things. I was just like, that was really nice. That was really nice to do. I mean, I so, wondered if that's going to branch off into a series, yeah, of comic or something. You know, like I think it could and should. Left it. Yeah, they kind of left it as like a possibility. And well, even as a I, comic, the only. The only thing with it being a, a show or another movie is that, like, is Billy Dee Williams really going to commit to doing something no, else? No, it, it like, wouldn't be, long, you know? Yeah, it, it would be a... It doesn't seem like... No, it, it would be a comic. With his health and age, you It'd know? It'd be a comic. So I'm like, yeah, maybe it's a book or comic, yeah. Yeah, but that was, uh, I thought that was done well. I like the fact that Janna was a stormtrooper, showing that Finn wasn't an anomaly. Um, I like yeah, that the, Finn the is... Whole idea, People were throwing around ideas of like, were, did other stormtroopers defect and things right. like that? And I, I liked that they at least touched on it and said, yeah, there's a few others, and here's one group right here. You know, it made sense to me. And, and does that, and, and, and does that imply also that some of them who 
had the same feeling as, as Finn could be force sensitive also? That's the thing. It's, is that the implication, or am I just reading too much into that? Uh, it, it is a possibility. I'm not saying that everyone who would have done that would have defected. I mean, you, do, you don't have to be force sensitive to be a nice person, right? But it, it's entirely yeah. possible, plausible, possible. I, I you know, it, but it, either way, showing that Finn wasn't necessarily an anomaly to the point where FN two one eight seven may have been a catalyst for other uh, uh, members of the First Order to do the same thing. Because she kind of said, you know, she was shocked, Jana was shocked when he basically, when she found out that he was FN-2187. She seemed to have known yeah. of him. Yeah. Right, which makes sense, you know, as, as, as dramatic as that was. Um, you know, with, with, with um, FN-2187 being kind of infamous as the traitor. Right. Maybe he was one of the first ones that. Oh, that he was. I, I think he was, yeah. and like, unless it comes out any other okay. way, I, I'm fa fairly confident it, it 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 was him, and and now we know that the the Force Awakens now takes on different meaning. Well, Force of what? Yeah. What what was awakening? Well, the Force moved Finn to do what he did, you know, and and the Force uh, moved um, you know everything around uh, Ray to do what she did, put them on the same path together. Or maybe it was just the force moving Finn and 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 the awakening in Finn, not necessarily awakening in Ray. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it wouldn't. I mean, you could you could interpret it, I'm sure, a billion different ways. But like it, it could now be and, seen that the Force Awakens was the awakening in Finn alone. Yeah, and the other two, the other side of it too is you could you could argue that like. Behind the scenes, at this point, Palpatine was gaining most of his power. And as Palpatine got more powerful, he, in fact, like, creates that light side to match it. You know, you know, like, unintentionally, as he gets more powerful, there has to be a light side to balance it. And the combination of... of <clears throat> That Star Destroyer just happening to be above Jakku, which is where Ray has been hiding this whole time. That synergy right. in the Force between Finn and Ray wakens at that same moment, in a sense, and brings Finn and Ray together so that they can both fulfill their destiny. Or and stop what? What if Lor San? Great evil, someone you know? suggested that Lor Santeca could have been watching Ray from afar, like Ben Kenobi. They may never have interacted, you know. Yeah, and that's true. I mean, we don't know hardly anything about Lord no. Tekka still. I mean, it's like he's one of the great mysteries because I feel like he was an old Iranian person because he, to him, Leia was a, a a princess, you know, a queen, right? Royalty, right? So I I, I remember. I think, I think he was from Alderaan. <laughs> I, I'm not sure but, where he was from. Um, I, I don't know. I, I remember reading it you know. his bio in in the Visual Dictionary, but that's what. Five years ago, or however long it was, um, yeah, got a got a couple. And he obviously, I think, I, I think he knew Luke. He came across him at some point, you know. But it's like, yeah, there's a whole. I mean, they could go on. Oh yeah, for any any one of these characters, be exactly. Yeah. So uh, Jacob asks, why does Palpatine never seem to be able to stop using the lightning when it's being redirected at him? <laughs> Just turn it off. Yeah. You know, well, I you know I think once the maybe bad guys don't think that way. They're just well, like, I'm gonna put more power into this. More that power you. hubris, <laughs> uh, that plus uh, maybe maybe the force. Once you start it, you can't stop it, right? Or it, it, it then become it becomes harnessed where you can't let it go. Uh, not just it's not just being redirected; it's being harnessed. That you know, I always thought that he basically fried himself with Mace Windu. Back in you know in those days, like I think he did that to himself. I don't think that. I mean, yeah, he you know, I, I think Palpatine was in more control when Windu was basically taking him down and redirecting the Force Lightning. He was in more control because Palpatine, all Palpatine wanted to do was get an apprentice. He wanted to get uh, uh, Anakin to the dark side, so he was going to do everything he possibly could do. And so if he could, if he could just get a little bit of empathy, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just you know I'll fry myself. It yeah. worked. Now, so in terms of that, that scene was definitely a show for Anakin. Yeah, but, yeah. So, so, but in terms of the end, when he says he is all the Sith and she is all the Jedi, like 
that was not just Palpatine and Ray at that point. That was, that, for all intents and purposes, all the Sith and all the Jedi. And, 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 the, and effectively, the way the Force works is it's always going for balance. When there's too much dark, there's going to be, the light is going to strike back. This is where you got to listen to Freddie Prince Jr. go off, right? Like, light is it's just yeah. going to strike back like you wouldn't believe. And, and so that, to me, because Palpatine basically looked like he had the upper hand, right? Just like Palpatine thought he had the upper hand in Return of the Jedi, and lo and behold, you know, you know, Luke brings, you know, Anakin back to the light side of the Force. You know, well, in this case, there, you know, the, the Force was more, the light side was more powerful uh, to push back against the dark side because there was, um, there was too much, uh, there wasn't enough balance. And the, and the balance would have been rigged in a heavy-handed way to the dark side. So, I, you know, I don't know why he couldn't stop the lightning necessarily, apart from saying it was potentially then no longer in his control. But it was actually being, instead of him yeah, forcing I, it out, it was being pulled from him. I think it just, yeah, it just he just ran out of control, I think. It's like just basically what happened. He put too much power into it, and it just backfired in that instant. But I mean, like, it's, it's sort of like when, when Ray initiated the electricity coming out of her hand, she didn't immediately stop it. You know, there, there's like right. the push of the electricity has to follow its course because like she didn't stop until the ship blew up, but she knew what was going on in the instant before it blew up. So it's kind of like she couldn't react in the fast enough time to stop it from blowing up the ship. Right. And it's sort of, I think that's the same way as Palpatine. Like, the moment he realizes it's being backfired onto me, it's too late. I'm going to disintegrate and do a blob. It's too late because even if he turned it off right then and there, whatever power he had put into it, the the, the energy that was flowing through his body still had to be released and comes back through her deflecting it back onto him. You know, I don't sense. know. It's just that's that's how I look at it. Right, you know what right. I mean? Like. Like, like, think about, like, when you're, if you're swelling up rage or you're swelling up this power inside you, like, it, it builds from your core going up through your body and into your chest and everything. And then it's like, you, you can't really pull that back for an instant. You know, it, it, it's got to release and then you can start pulling it back. And I, I kind of look at it that same way. I mean, so on I don't that, know if you know what I'm trying to say or get it. Yeah, no, I get, but, <laughs> I get what you're saying. Sometimes you don't know it's too much until you, until it's too late. So, yeah. what do you think about uh, uh, Leia being a Jedi? I loved that scene. I thought it I was know. cool. I, I, I was like, you know, whoa! <laughs> I loved it. Because it also, it, it also explains both aspects of her. Like, it explains how she could use the Force like we saw in The Last Jedi. Right. But also lets us know why she isn't a full-fledged Jedi. Right. Why she isn't carrying around a lightsaber like we like, well, like some might have expected, you know, it's it's that she had a vision of her children, and then she had a choice, and said, "I'm not going to follow this path. I'm going to put more time into my life and where I'm going, and someday someone will take up my mantle and finish what I began." You yeah. know, it's like it's just. It's just this choice that she made to redirect her life because of the vision she saw for her children, you know, and or her son or whatever, you right. know what I mean? So, and they, and that, they, they just quickly said that in the movie, but I got it, you know. No, I, mean? I got it's it like too. I understood it. I, I figured it out and I was like, and then that makes sense in contact with The Last Jedi. But see, you know, there were a lot of people who were like, there were a lot of people who were like, oh, Jade, I saw this online. I don't know where, what. YouTube or some texting and Twitter or whatever, but people were like, oh, he threw away half of The Last Jedi. He didn't care. They just retconned the whole thing. And I'm like, no, he didn't. Most of The Rise of Skywalker is based on what happened in The Last Jedi. Precisely. He didn't throw any of that away. No. He didn't throw any of it away. <laughs> like, like, if you really sit down and think about it, it's like, no, that, that, but, that, you know, that line in Rise of Skywalker explains Leia's character in the last so well, it explained you know what I mean? so but, well, but you know, like, I didn't. Yeah. Even, yeah, but John, I didn't even need that explanation. Like, I just I took it on faith. Like, oh, Leia has force powers, which makes sense. She's 
the twin yeah, yeah, sister to Luke Skywalker in a powerful, you know, the, you know, the, the Skywalker uh, line. Um, but like, um, he, you know, this all, just adds to it. That's to that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just, it, it, it completely, all, yeah. everything was just additive, right? I was like, ah, oh, all right, like I totally got it. I totally got it. Totally made sense to me. Yeah. Totally. That's why I'm saying I don't think they retconned anything. I actually don't. They I think didn't. They just added and built upon. Well, okay. They added so, and built so upon. like, so, but like, for the people that that say that, I'm like, or or the, even the people that say, well, you can get rid of the last Jedi and and it'll still make sense. I'm like, what are you talking about? No, it wouldn't. Nah, Where nah, would Snoke nah. be? Right? Like, how did that happen? Like, you know, yeah. you or or um, Luke to a large degree. Like, how did he? Where? You know, you can't get rid of the last Jedi despite. You know all your misgivings yeah. about it. So, like even and then, Luke even grows as a character. Luke even right. grows as a character. Luke, because oh my god! See him when when Ray's like, I see the point now. I see why Luke ran away because when he got to this point of realization with Palpatine, it's the same reason Ben and Yoda ran away. Right. You know what I mean? Ben and Yoda went into hiding because they knew they weren't. There wasn't. It wasn't ready. The balance wasn't there. Yeah. To take down something this evil. And they went into hiding to sort of hope that they could find that balance later on, either in somebody else or within themselves. And then Luke does the same thing after finding, you know, what he feels is a failure with the way he taught Ben and then what happened after going to look for the Emperor and things like that. It's like, and then Ray comes to the same conclusion and then Luke catches the lightsaber and says no. Right. All of us were wrong. See, I think I he think made a mistake. that's what I liked. And you can't I, make and you can't make the same mistake. So, Break the so, chain. You know that's on that light side. It's, it's within you. It was within all of us, but we gave up. You can't give up. So you know? I think that to me, a lot of people will say that's where it got retconned. Basically, when Luke says, "You, you know, you know, you should treat this, you know, this some weapon of a Jedi with more respect," and I to me. No. The way that, I that's all that's Luke growing as a character. Well, no, it's not just that. It was Luke being sarcastic. I mean, it was it was his. Yes, you know, was. It, was, it was Luke he saying, was "Don't you know you should yeah. treat this with more?" Because the last time at that yeah. in that very spot, like he's the one who tossed it back. So the fact he said yeah. you should treat this with more, respect, I laughed. I'm like, because <laughs> it's like do as I say, not as I do. Right? It's it's perfect. Yes, yes. But it. You know, it dovetails into and the that's message. Exactly why, and that's also, it's also why Yoda smacked him in the head with the key. Right. That's what I'm like, saying. Little, what, you know? yeah, but because because he's you know uh, you know I'll never forget this line. It was so powerful. Like we are what they grow beyond. Right. Like it's yeah. it, you know I'm just well, like God. That was like the most yeah. powerful line from the Last Jedi and from from any of the films as far as I'm concerned. Because you know it yeah. set the stage for Luke to realize you can't. I mean, you may run away. But that doesn't fix anything, you know. And Luke was always, I think, more of a pacifist, more than anything. And, but you know, he also had yeah. the practical, you know, uh, uh, position of wanting to defend and do what was right. So you know, when he basically catches a lightsaber, I'm like, whoa! And then he says, you know, you should treat this Jedi weapon with more respect. And I just like, I, it was funny because you know, because. It, and he, and he it, had a smirk on his face. Exactly. He was kind of like, you should have more yeah. respect. Right? Kind of like, because the way he was with The Last Jedi, he was just being playful. He was just like, so I, I thought it was funny. And then he says, what are you doing here? Like, like, come on, Ray. I thought you were, what are you doing here? What? What are you doing here? Like, what? you know, so to me, it was Luke sh showing Ray that um, he was wrong without saying that he was wrong, right? In, in a very male way, like, I was wrong, but I'm not going to tell you that I was wrong. And I was sorry, but I'm not going to tell you that I'm sorry. So do as I say, not as yeah. I do. And, and so I know some, some fans will say, oh, it was a total retcon. I'm like, no! No, <laughs> no it wasn't! Did you I'm not watch it. The I... Last Jedi? Like, I know you hate it, but did you watch it? it? I still look at it as a... I still look at it as a growth in the character. I mean, yes. even within the Last Jedi, Luke grew as a character because when, like, when when he's sitting there talking about talking to Yoda and Yoda burns the tree, that whole thing is another lesson for Luke to grow as a character. Right. You know? And and 
this is just a fulfillment of that growth, you know? Yeah, and then, of course, raising the X-Wing like Yoda did. And, like, you know, it, it to me, that's, like, where some people get angry, like, ah, oh, you're just, it's just fan service. Like, and what's wrong with that? Like, and? They like, showed, they showed the... So I expected the thing to come out from the from when they showed it in Force Awakens. They showed the X Wing under the water. Yeah. in the Force Awakens. No, uh, maybe, maybe it was the beginning of Last. Jedi. It was the Last Jedi. It was, it was the Last it Jedi. Was the last Jedi. Yeah. So, but I expected it to at some point come out of the water. It just didn't happen until this movie. Right. So it's not like it's not. People say fan service. They throw that word around. Okay. Fan service is seeing Wedge in the background of the film. Okay. Which I love. That is fan and service. John Williams. Yes, I loved it yeah. too. I loved yeah. it also. Yeah. yeah, John Williams is a little bit of fan service. Right. You know, that's not necessarily the same level. But but seeing the X Wing risen out of the water, that's not fan service. That's the part of the plot. It's part of the story. Right. Like people throw that word around, that phrase, but they don't understand. It's like if you're someone watching football, okay? A lot of people throw the, the phrase around, oh, they're doing it play action. He was caught up at the play action. They don't even understand what the word play action means. <laughs> they're just saying that just, phrase. Just, just it like, makes them, just, it makes them sound more, yeah, just, I don't know, no. more like, knowledgeable than they actually are. Th- this is, and this that's is why, why people throw around the word fan service. That, that's like, why it, it, you don't it, even know it, what you're saying. You don't know the meaning of the phrase you're saying. It, it agitates <laughs> me just as much. And it did with The Force Awakens <laughs> when people kept calling Ray and Mary Sue. Like, you don't... Hang on. I'm yeah, like, no, hang on. No. We don't know who she... Yeah. I mean, we don't know who she is. And then The Last Jedi, well, the she's nobody. I'm like, but we still yet. don't know. Like, and is that it? Okay, maybe yeah. it is. But, like, we don't We don't know how The Force... Were. Every In every new film, you know, and, and even though... I mean, or In every new part of the franchise, we seem to discover um, a new thing that The Force can do. Right? Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, because it can. Absolutely. And the Force works in mysterious ways. And, you know, you, did, you people didn't necessarily know everything that there was about everything, right? You know, when even Yoda didn't know that you could communicate from beyond until Qui-Gon basically figured it out. Right? So, yeah. like, you know, so it, it's it's in, in, in his passing, right? So, you know, when people called Ray and Mary Sue, and I, got, can... I got really mad. Like, dude. And, yeah. and so now... Well, and you can argue... Go ahead, finish. No, sorry. you're going to say Luke could have been a Mary Sue or Gary Stu or whatever. Well, no, 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 no. I was going to comment on Qui-Gon and his powers. Oh, right. Because um, I, I think Qui-Gon <laughs> learned it because he wasn't strict with the Jedi or with the Jedi teaching. Qui-Gon was a little bit of a rebel in, right. that, in that group, you know what I mean? Like they said, like, I think, I think Obi-Wan even said, if you would just follow the guidelines and the rules, you would be on the council. But he's like, no, I, I like seeing things from a different point of view. And that different perspective that he had allowed him to learn something that the other masters couldn't learn. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, about, yeah, about true. About becoming a force ghost. <clears throat> and maybe he didn't obtain it all the way. Like, people say, like, he could only project his voice and he could only be seen in areas that were, like, super concentrated with the light side of the force right. or something like that. Yeah. Which is why why Anakin and Ben only saw him when he was on the planet with those three special people. Remember the father, the son, and the daughter? That oh, was, yeah. For the, was uh, that called Malice? Mal- well, uh, no, Malacor, I know the arc. Malice, I, Not, it wasn't Malachor, yeah, was it? Was. No, it wasn't Malachor. That's the Sith Temple thing. Yeah. Um, I'd have to go and watch that arc again, Morpheus. which I'm due for anyway. Mortis? Mortis? Mortis. 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 Yeah, it was the Mortis arc. Bit, right? Yeah. I'm like, Morpheus? No. (laughs) It's close. (laughs) Closer than me. So then anyway, so then because he learned that step, Yoda and Luke and and those guys were able to learn the next step, which was actually like Obi-Wan, what he learned, you know? It's like to project himself visually as a a spirit and interact and talk with the the people. And then Yoda like learned the next step to where he could actually interact with the environment. You know what I mean? It's right. Like, so each one learns another step on the sh- on the shoulders of right. the previous. Right. And I think I think all along, like the Emperor Palpatine, there he knew that there was a way to cheat that. He yeah. knew somewhere along the lines, 
And Plagueis knew it, his teacher. But I think what they didn't know was that the Force healing was in the Jedi, the original Jedi text, which very well could have been always on Ahch too. So even Yoda and those guys during the Clone Wars period, maybe they didn't know that much about Ahch too and know that those Jedi texts were there. So that's why right. no, that's why that's why Obi Wan wasn't able to heal Qui Gon because no one knew about no one that knew about yet. it no right one, no one no one had seen those books she learned how to do it by reading the Jedi text that's the thing and that's the only reason she knew and this baby Yoda it was instinctual for him right he's such a baby such a young thing the child right to cry something you with, know what I mean but with, yeah the which, child which, which I'm and very grateful so, I can't, I can't believe that sorry not a, as an aside. They they actually yeah, came yeah. out today and said Baby Yoda is not Baby Yoda. It's not Yoda. I'm like, yeah. I think yeah, we all kind of knew yeah. that, but thank you, like, because I keep it's not yeah. Baby Yoda. It was just something people were saying because right. they didn't know what else. To they say. didn't know what else to say. Yeah, right. It, it's slowly catching on that everyone's calling it the child. Right. Because all the merchandise is going to be. It's going to be the, the child. child. Yeah. 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 So that'll catch on and take over eventually, but. We can still call it Baby Yoda once in a while. We're gonna, we're gonna, you know, honestly, see, that's the thing, is now culture has got ahead of it. So, like, people are going to go yeah, in yeah. saying, do you have the Baby Yoda? And, like, what are you talking about? No, we don't have any of the Baby Yoda stuff. It, it's going to be, oh, because it's marketed like, as the child. It's, 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 that's, that's put them in a very tough spot. Like, a very, very, <laughs> very tough spot. Because, uh, because even I when we know its name, my, even when, he, even when we know its name. my Funko oh, Of course. <laughs> They've got baby. They'll they'll have the child everything. Mark my words. Come May, yeah. there's gonna be child merch everywhere. They're gonna be. I bet you anything. A <laughs> breakfast cereal. I bet you anything. Oh, of course. Because sure, because yeah. they're gonna have to build up to Mandalorian season two, and now they know how. Sorry, not to sidetrack. Because, but you're right. Yeah, like yeah. you know, it was hey, just instinctual. Where, where, I gotta ask you a question though. So we both agree we loved it. We've gone over a number of points through the film that we wanted to discuss. Where do you think it goes from here? Like, let's say, is, is there one, like, like my feeling is this, okay? I feel like even though John Boyega loves Star Wars, I know that him as yeah. an actor, he has been fantastic in other things that he's done, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Like, even though a lot of people can't stand the Pacific Rim stuff, I loved him as just giant monster movies. You know what I mean? And I thought he was pretty cool in them. I know he wants to do more stuff like that. He wants to do fun action things. I loved him in Attack the Block. I don't know if you've seen that, but if you haven't, check out Attack the Block. It was fantastic. And I know he has this potential to be a great actor. So I know he wants to go on and do some other things. Daisy Ridley also. You know, she's done, you know, the, the one on the train there, the Orient Express, and she did a few other films even while working on Star Wars. And I know she wants to branch out and do other things and, be like her idols, you know, and so, but I'm like, what if Poe and Chewie take the Falcon and go on an adventure? Or That could be another movie. Or, or Poe, po you know? and Zori. Some, Sunshine, <laughs> Sunshine asked about Zori yeah, Bliss. Yeah, or that. Yeah, Zor, I, I, you know, so, that? you know, there's so well, many, okay. And, and Chewie so, off the Falcon. <laughs> I, I think, in, in my in my estimation, you know, you know, Jonas wants to do more. Oh yeah, Jonas is on board. For yeah, more Chewbacca. Oh yeah, as much as you want. I, you know, so, I, I, do it. I wouldn't. I okay, <laughs> so, it. so, I, I think. He, he, and then ten years, ten years from now, you bring back Ray and Finn. So they settle as actors, they'll want to come back later on. Uh, you know, you know I don't know. From now, they'll, I, they'll want to come back. I I don't you know? know. I think okay. So so this is a large. I mean, it's a larger question, and there's no wrong answer to this. But in my humble opinion, the future of the Star Wars franchise is in the Mandalorian, uh, or it's in you know these these live action TV series that they're developing. And and what I mean by that is, and the, the, yes, I think standalone films are certainly going to be a thing. I don't. I think the era of trilogies. It has been has been done. Oh yeah, no, those are gone. Right, yeah, I think and, so, and so you know, why, but why would you? You know, do, I, do a film, do a film, and if you want to see those characters again, do another film. Right, it's kind of like the way I look at the Iron Man or the Thor movies. Right, Iron Man isn't a trilogy of films. Iron Man is three standalone movies with Iron Man in them. Right, it's not a trilogy. They don't connect to each other. No, in a sense. right. You know, 
other than a broad sense. But it's not like the end of one picks up in the beginning of two. So you I, know, it's I, just a broad. You know, I don't. So I look at it that way, like I, I, do I think a movie somewhere down the road. No, no, no. It won't be a movie. I don't think it'll be a movie. I think like for many of these characters that we've seen before, I think it'll be a live action TV series or a cartoon series. Like I, I really do. Um, yeah. Like in terms of like visual content, that's not like reading material, like a book or 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 a comic, which isn't going to be as widely seen. Um, so I, I personally, I like the visual medium. I, yeah, I do like, too. I personally. If you're going to do a major thing with it, I don't mind the comics. I read, I get all the comics. I read all the comics. I do not get all the books. I don't read no, every yeah, book. No, I don't I either. I don't even audible every book. Right. I only, I've only audible maybe three books. You right. Know? So it's like I can't even do that. So I don't digest those. And I can't stand the fact. I read the book. I got it. That when, when Asaz Ventress died. Spoiler alert. Sorry. But... I wanted to see that on a visual medium. Right. I can't stand the fact that one of my favorite main characters comes to an end in something that's not visual. Right. I'm like, show me it on something, a right. cartoon, whatever. I don't care. So and that's why I'm like, I'm so adamant about the end of Ezra and Ahsoka and Thrawn, the end of their story, what happens okay, after Rebels, so that's the has thing. to be visual. Uh, uh, it uh, has to be something. Cor a Corey cartoon, Wolf a, a series, whatever. No, that's the thing. Is now that the It's a rumor, it hasn't been confirmed, but by people who would you know put their necks out there, uh, Corey Wolf, who's been a longtime fan, um, uh, I think they, they renamed their podcast. It used to be First Order Transmissions. It was previously the, uh, you might remember the Wolf Pack, um, uh, wasn't he coffee with Kenobi too? <laughs> he, you know, he might there. He might have a crossover. Yeah, no, he's pretty. Okay, he's sorry. he's he, he's well known within the community for community producers. They came out. Uh, he and Noah uh, came out the other day and basically said that there is going to be a cartoon series sequel to Rebels with Ahsoka and Sabine. So, is that going to be Ahsoka's return to becoming a Jedi? Is that going to be their journey, ostensibly, to go find Ezra, right? Like, what, you know, what yeah. what's that going to be? But that's been rumored uh, to be happening. Yeah, Rumor. because, like, I, I want to know what happens with some of these characters. Of course. And I don't want to just read about it. No, them. I agree, I agree. But that's the thing. I so, enjoy so, the comics, but it's but, like, but I don't that's, want the definitive moment to be you know, in for, those media. I but want that's it the thing. visual. For the bigger characters, Disney now has the opportunity to explore live action, TV, or even to a large, to a certain degree, the cartoon stuff. Like, Disney Plus. Yeah. Disney Plus is their gateway. It, you know, I think the live action TV stuff will sell more subscriptions than the cartoon stuff. Um, quite honestly, um, I don't think they're going to have you know well, award winning. But, but I got to tell you, I'm going to watch the cartoon TV. Well, yeah, I don't care. Of course, I mean, yeah, I I, John, know. I'm with you. The problem is, like, you know, for Disney Plus, like they've got to they've got to make something like why would I subscribe to watch Star Wars cartoons? Like to the average person. Like yeah. the Mandalorian yeah. is a win because it's it's visual story, you know. The, of course, you know the the child uh, breakaway hit, right? The sleeper hit, um, yeah. you know, or the, the really the sleeper character, right? The burying the lead, uh, you know, it, it's enough. It's compelling well, it, enough that people will sign on. And and he brought in he brought in some lore right away, like. Everybody in the world right now wants to know more about the Mandalorian. Right. That what was it? Episode three or four when they all came out and helped him fight off the, the bounty hunters in town and let him escape. Like everyone now wants to know more about that culture. We right. Know, who were those guys? What were they doing? Yeah. There's a whole bunch of people like Boba Fett. What the heck's going on here? <laughs> and they want to know the purge. What, what right. happened on their planet? I'm telling you. you. Everyone, because my brother. My brother went back and he said, give me a list of every Clone Wars and Rebels episode that I need to watch to catch up on what's going on with these Mandalorians. You oh, know? yeah. And it's like he wanted a list of what episodes were crucial. But see, like, but John... I know some of the stuff, but I don't remember. I glazed over a lot of when, it. You know? when, you, when, but, when you talk about the future for these characters, though, it's specifically Disney+, and I think it's either going to be cartoons, 
uh, and well done cartoons. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I there's they have not done a poor cartoon to 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 date. Um, you know, despite the Clone Wars age, it still stands up. Uh, you know, it's 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 yeah. it's an astounding series. Um, but it, it's going to be that. So we may see Poe and Chewie in a cartoon. Uh, and when I say cartoon. Yeah. You know, I don't mean like a Bugs Bunny kind of thing, you know, or, or something necessarily it's like Star Wars Resistance, which Poe is in, right? It's, 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 you know, more of the Clone Wars, more of the Rebels, 3D animation, like, uh, you know, film quality, story and character and visuals um, that I think they, they've got a lot of freedom to explore uh, that, that they wouldn't be able to do in movies. And I think that's where Disney realized after Solo... Uh yeah, that like they be. they have to go that, that a different direction funny. for the franchise. They have to. I don't don't. Oh, I was. I don't think that I haven't. Uh, you know, I, I don't. Uh, and I don't. Sorry, don't think that it's it's all or nothing either. Because I think it, down the line we're probably going to see the Mandalorian be a film, be a feature length film. Yeah, I think I we're going to go too. five seasons in. Uh, I mean, I don't know how far they plan on taking the story, but they'd be dumb. Not to do five seasons and then end it, if you will, in a film. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I agree because I because I you know Bob Iger has already said in some of the, the callings. I mean, we watched him on the stock thing because my dad and I trade stocks, and he said a couple of times that his vision is that shows will come to Disney Plus if they're popular enough. They might turn into a movie. Right. We might do a movie, and if the characters are likable and people want to see more. Those characters from the one standalone movie would roll over into a Disney Plus series to flush them out a little bit more. Right. And he's like, he envisions it going back and forth, depending on the reaction of the crowd, the popularity of those characters, and where they think their best fit would be for the next story that they have dealing with those characters. And it makes and sense. And that's kind of why I was like, I agree with you, where there won't be trilogies anymore. It'll just be like these characters are in another film or they're in a Disney plus series or whatever. And like, I was just getting at was like, I want to know what happens to Ray and to Finn and to Poe. And I want to know what happens after rise of Skywalker. See, I, and if I, they do do it in a cartoon yeah, or some kind of thing like that, I don't know. That's fine. I, I, it I, satisfies my itch. Yeah. And I, I don't care if it's like I said, I don't care if it's 10, 12, 20 years down the road. They can wait 30 years for all I care before they tell me what happened. Yeah, them. it's going to be a while. Somewhere down the road, yeah. I want to know what happened. Somewhere down the road, I want to know what happened. It, it's going to be a while. Something, something has to happen. Do they rebuild? Do they make like a new New Republic? Do they, you know what I mean? Like, right. what, something has to happen after this. And there's got to be a reason somewhere in the future, a thousand years from now, there has to be a reason why they're still talking about the Skywalkers and why this saga right, right. matters. Because yeah. this is yeah. a story that took place a long time ago. Yep. So why, why is it a thousand or ten thousand years from now, people are still talking about the Skywalkers and what they did during this Nine Saga film series? Like, in the, in the Star Wars universe, this is a story yeah. that people tell for generations. See that? I, so it'll be... that's kind of what I want to... It'll I'm be... Getting at, like, It'll so be maybe interesting. Maybe you could just skip a thousand years or skip ten thousand years and have all new characters, all right. new stuff. Well, you'd need to give an inkling as to like this is why the Skywalkers were important. They're still in our mythos ten thousand years from now. You know, yeah. I don't know something. You know, but it'll uh, happen. I, I'm I, sure it'll happen. And I like the idea of going backwards too. Seeing yep. the, the start of the Jedi. Well, the and Jedi that's War, there. There's know, like, there's a rumor. Me also. Yeah, there's a ru another rumor. Not that I get into rumors or put out that much faith in them, but a rumor that basically the next Star Wars standalone film is going to be during during the High Republic, like uh, you know in, the, in in its glory days. Like I've heard I, that thrown around now, the yep. High Republic, yeah. Like in its that. its That's glory days. I've never heard, but so I've heard it now. It would have yeah. it, it would have predated Palpatine in that era. It pre predated yeah. the Phantom Menace, uh, possibly even predated uh, 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 Yoda or Yoda's presence. Like, cause about a thousand years, um, uh, uh, BBY, um, yeah. I've always been intrigued by that line that Obi Wan said: "For a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights were the guardians of peace, right, and justice in the galaxy." A thousand generations, if you total it up, that's by doing what. In, if you look up what the average person, what the what the 
Census Bureau and those guys consider a 20, 30 years. It comes out to about, it comes out to almost 10,000 years. Right. So I'm like, all right, go back 10,000 years ago to when the Jedi were the, the, or the peace and justice in the galaxy. Oh, I'm in. You know what I mean? Like, that, there's so much, what happened so then? much, John, stuff. John, <laughs> there is so much to explore. So much. Yes, there is. There like, it, it, there's no, I mean, like, people are like, okay, Star Wars is over. I'm like, no, it's not, it's just, it, it's just begun. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I was looking something there's up. so many things they could do. Um, I don't know so if I can find things. it. There's, oh, that's Exegol. Um, there's a reference in here to Revan. Darth Revan. Really? Yeah. And, uh, Tenebris, who I believe was, Tenebris was Plagueis's master Darth Tenebris. Oh wow. Uh if I, but I but no Tenebris was to my knowledge Tenebris up until this point much like Revan was legends. Um I got to find it. I don't know where uh, I got to find it again. Cuz those were pulled out um I caught it I caught a tweet the other day and then I couldn't find the reference again in here. Um but yeah, Revan is now kind of through the the visual dictionary pulled into canon and Tenebris as well. Tenebris was a, I want to say in Legends, in the Plagueis novel, was a uh, Bith. Um, oh, okay. And Plagueis was that. immune. I've seen the picture then. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't realize that was his name. Well, if see, I... I knew, I always knew that they had planned on pulling Revan in because I remember when they made the Revan Black Series six inch figure. Right. I remember I was at. I believe I was at a celebration when I first saw them. They were showing them off. And I asked the guys in the interview I did for the podcast, and he said, we are not, we are no longer making any Star Wars action figures that are not canon. Yeah, but that wasn't, so that wasn't that was accurate. Figure, yeah, was like, that's but because, they also that's had... because they told us this, this character would be in something coming down the road. And but but they said the same thing about Jaina. The Jaina. The idea that they were going to use Revan, but then they never did. Yeah. Yeah, and then they went and made that. That you're right. They went and made Jaina Solo. Based on the black, the black X-wing costume, and she's not canon at all. Yeah, you're right. She was like a fan pick. Wasn't well, it? even okay, or what? Shadow Troopers. Shadow Troopers, to my knowledge, aren't canon. No, we've never seen them in a film, yeah. The closest we ever got, yeah, the the, the standard Stormtrooper painted black. We've never seen them, even in a comic, I don't think. And this is know. new. They this always, is new from Hasbro. They always go to the, um, they always go to the, because uh, they've made that particular character a black Stormtrooper, like, a number of times through the years. Right. They've had a re- they had a crimson one. Canon. They had a crimson one that was in the Entertainment Earth 4-pack. Yeah. It was years ago, and yeah. a pop, and, and a and Funko get, Pop vinyl. And now we get Sith, and now we get Sith troopers, you know. So, so they, <laughs> yeah, I would love, I would have loved. The toys, see, I would have loved. Sometimes the toys push the uh, the cannon. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was kind of. I mean, they turn they turn the shadow trooper into the death troopers. They just they right, the yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They went, yeah, a black stormtrooper is cool. But let's change the armor, not just paint them black, you know? So and the same with the red ones. They were like, yeah, red ones are cool, but let's change the armor. Let's not make them just the white ones painted red, you know? So they I, slightly I, changed I, the armor. I, want, I would have liked to have seen more of the Sith Troopers, but understood why they couldn't leave Exegol. Like, that would have just been pandemonium yeah. Like for everybody. Yeah. But I would have liked to have seen more of that, but that's just me. I would have liked to have seen more of the Knights of Ren. There's something that I would love to see for a live action series. Um, you, you know, know what? You know what's funny is though that is something that I am satisfied with. I have been satisfied with the comic about the Knights of Ren for background and giving me a little bit of story before Rise of Skywalker. Wait, wait, like, which which comic arc? Have you have you started reading the new comics? The the, the Knights of the Kylo with Knights of Ren in it. Uh, I don't know if I've I've got that one yet. They're about two or three issues in, and I, 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 Knights of I won't Ren? spoil anything, but no, yeah, it's like the Kylo, it's the Kylo Ren comic, and oh, I, 
I already stored it in my box, so I, I can't just grab it. Hang on, I've got tearing the living room apart. Afro Vader, Tie Fighter. I've got. Okay, are you talking the Rise of Skywalker Allegiance? Target Vader, Age of Resistance. No, no. Age of it's either called Kylo Ren or it's called the Knight. Yeah, I think it's called Kylo Ren or something like the the Knight of Ren or something. Or like the that. beginnings of Ren. I I think that one's still. I don't have it yet. I get one every month. I get a shipment every month. It's been coming every week. It's been once a week the last three weeks. Okay, then I and think the it'll be my next shipment then. This week, I think. Yeah, it'll be in my the next shipment. One comes out this week. Is that is that telling the story it's of Ben real, Solo? It's a real fast. It's a real fast mini series. It's a story about Ben Solo and, and right. Kylo Ren. Right. Yeah. How he, I, how he means I just don't have it yet. Ren. But the first issue, the first issue really is like mostly about the Knights of Ren. Oh. And that was really satisfying for me as far as giving me background. You know, in, in opposition to what I said before, you know, where I, I, most of the time I like something visual. But I got to say that that comic is so well written and well done that it satisfied me. I don't know. For I, as far yeah. as giving me some background to the Knights of Ren. I, you know? I, 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 like, I, I like comics. I like, I enjoy them. But I, I, I so much more appreciate the cartoons uh, or the films. Like it, I'm just much more. Just I'm so much more drawn to that. Oh, by by magnitudes more, magnitudes. Yeah. And there's a lot of room in there between what we see in this comic to what we see in Force Awakens, right? To what we see in Last Era in Rise of Skywalker. There's there's years, ten, fifteen years there of Knights and Ren. That you could do a story about them in. See, you know, I, you very I well could have them in a like, like or do something. Emphis Nest, you know? Emphis Nest. I would like to have seen that more too. of. I want to know what happens. Yeah, right. That, that's another group of characters. Get Emphis and get get um get Warwick Davis in there and just Weasel, have a Weasel. And, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I want. I love Lewis Davis so much that I want to see him in a full-on series. I want to see him every week. I'm like, come on, give me a Warwick Davis cartoon or show. You know, did, either did you know? Voice of the cartoon or yeah, live action. Did, did, Go did, ahead. That 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 end scene with uh, Wicket at the end of uh, um, the Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, that was him. Yeah. Him and his son. Was it his son? That was oh, his son. Cool. That was Warwick Davis's son. I didn't know that. Yeah. So assumedly, Wicket's son. I knew he was in the college because I didn't know it was his yeah. son. Yeah. So I, I thought that was pretty. That was pretty cool. It's like what? So many Easter eggs. Like. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, and I gotta say too. I, I heard you saying on one of your, one of your videos, you were saying how much you liked the banter between those two. Uh, Biker Scouts in the Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. That was great. they were waiting up on the ridge. That was... I love that, too. I was like, you're spot on. That is such a fantastic scene. We've it never was seen, great. We've never seen them in the downtime, just kind of sitting around waiting. Uh, I loved it. I was it... like, they're arguing. They're kind of like we're doing jabs at each other. It's like these two guys have worked together for a long time. It's like, Come on, man. You always get to do this. Yeah, no, they. they I, they're shooting the little thing with the guns. He's like, "Are you kidding me? Did you hear what he just said? He killed ten of his own men. You really want to push this?" <laughs> I just love stuff like that. No, it, you know, it, it, little it, tiny it, things. That that was a perfect. Makes it so real. It was a that perfect was episode. It, that know? was a perfect episode. Episode eight it was perfect. Yeah. The Mandalorian. It was perfect. Oh, and that dark saber. I mean. Oh right, coming I, back. I, that I, dude. I, I hope everyone's seen it, but that just blew my mind. And then my brother was like, "Is that the? Did I see that? Is that the rebel? Did you just, you know?" <laughs> that just rebels, <laughs> but hello, pre Vizsla. Like, my brother. I, I was like, "Yes, it is. It is the dark thing." Yeah. He's like, "How did he get it? What's going on?" That's what I'm saying. <laughs> There's so much story to tell with Star Wars. So, like, when people say, oh, "Is this the last Star Wars movie?" I'm like, "No." Like, it's the end of a saga, yeah. nine movies, but that's not it. So I know people inevitably are going to, like, you know, the next yeah. Star Wars film is going to come out, I thought it was Star Wars is over. And, like, no. And here's what I really, here's what I really want. Here's what I really want. All right, bottom line, this is what I really want. If they could do this for me, I would be in heaven. I want back-to-back -back Star Wars. So yeah. The like, what would have been yeah. ideal? Here's what would have been ideal. When The Mandalorian ended... All right, give me a break for Christmas or whatever. But then, like 
this week you start up the right. Clone Wars. Yes. I don't want to wait till February. Right. It's this week. And right. Then, like, a week or two goes by when Clone Wars ends, Kenobi starts. Right. So I have... Well, that's not going to happen. It might not be the same. It might not be the same series. Right. But I want to eventually yep. down the road back to back. Thing where every week there's every week there's a different Star Wars thing for me to consume. Yep, I every agree. Week. I I, I, I hope it happens. <laughs> I, it, and it can be a different season. Every every eight or ten weeks they switch it to a different show. Right? Yeah, for so sure. But, I, but at least I have something every week to look forward. See, to. I I, I feel <laughs> the same way about Marvel too. You know. In the MCU. Yeah, they could do that, too. I would be all in for that, too, you know? I, 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 maybe. I can't tell you. Like, you don't even know. I went through all the Clone Wars. Since I got Disney+, Plus. I, I watched every movie. I went through all the Clone Wars. Went through all of Rebel. Resistance. I'm waiting for season two of Resistance to show up so I can watch it. Because I don't have cable. We don't uh, have to Disney, the regular Disney channel. Right. So I haven't seen any of season two. I saw the first episode because that's the only one they put up. Right. So I haven't seen anything in season two hardly. So I got to wait till they put it on Disney Plus. We cut the cable line. We only use Roku and the apps. And right, the right. So, um, yeah. which is fine. I otherwise I haven't missed any programming. Well, I'm, I'm hoping because I I tried yeah, to get Jedi. But, Jedi likes Rebels. It, or liked Rebels, right? And, and, you know, she'd watch it with me. And she's just a kid. My hope is, is that with the new Clone Wars, like, as we watch it, my hope is, is that I can actually start her into the Clone Wars in the very beginning, too. Go back I, into the beginning. Go back, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. it, Clone Wars is definitely a little longer and a bit more for, ma more, for more mature audiences. But, like, um, that's my hope. I, I, whether it happens or not, I don't yeah. know. But, no, but I know, you know we're, we're far off topic. Year, but. a year... Within a year or two, she's going to mature a little bit more and get into it more. You right. Know what I mean, I, I could already well, see her let, let me lighting put it, up more. Let me put it this when way. I see her reactions. Like, when I see her reactions, I already see her understanding more and reacting more and lighting up more with certain characters. Like, when you showed the trailer reaction, she's like, Poe! There's Poe! I was like, yes! <laughs> so, so she, she, the McDonald's, uh, uh, the Happy Meal toys that they have, which were kind of, uh, they were okay. But there's a checklist, yeah, right? Yeah. And 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 we we have all of them, um, except for I think I wanted a couple more Vader ones. But like the Vader, right? So Vader's a part of it, right? And so every time they yeah. go to McDonald's, she asks everybody, "Why is the Dar why is there a Darth Vader toy for the Rise of Resistance? Because he wasn't in the Rise of, or a Rise of Skywalker? Because he wasn't in the Rise of yeah. Skywalker?" And, and so it's like she, <laughs> it's just funny. And I was like, "Well, he he wasn't, but he kind of was. Like his helmet was there and his voice was there." Uh, and plus, yeah. I mean, I as like I didn't want to say, "Well, it's because they're original trilogy characters like young Luke and young Leia or whatever." But it's an, it's an astute observation, I thought. Yes, yeah. So, sorry. I had to pull my oh, happy yeah, little yeah. toy down. So, anything else to say about The Rise of Skywalker? No, I think we covered it all, man. I yeah. I mean, like, I mean, there's so many things that, you know, could have, you know, gone, you know, this way, that way, or the other way. And I know there's a few questions that I that I probably missed in the, in the chat. But, yeah, I mean, overall... Uh, I don't rate film, uh, rate uh, you know Star Wars films. I don't rank them necessarily. I enjoyed it. I think more than the other two in the sequel trilogy, but enjoyed those parts of those two for different reasons. Kind of to your point, um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, it's it's a win for me. But maybe I you know I'm I don't know if I'm a good Star Wars fan or a bad Star Wars fan. But it would take an awful no, lot no, for you to ruin it for me. There is no good or bad. There is no good or bad. You're just a Star Wars fan. That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like some people, but some people I just get so I'm, like I'm a Star Wars fan. They you get know, so just, mad. I'm good or bad. But 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 like <laughs> yeah, the, well. yeah, I draw the line when people gatekeep. That that uh, that's what makes me yeah. mad. It makes me mad when people get mad at entertainment franchises too. I'm like, dude, it wasn't for you. I get it. You know, I, well, you know, it is what it is. is. I always look at it like this, you know, like, okay, maybe I'm not the biggest Star Trek fan that ever lived, okay? But I have enjoyed all the Star Trek shows. I've enjoyed all the Star Trek movies. But yes, there are some movies that are worse than others. There are some Star Trek movies that I can't watch a second time, <laughs> especially the first one. It's like hard for me to watch again. But 
yet there are others like Wrath of Khan that I love and I can watch it right. a million times, you know? But it's like, so every franchise has that. There are James Bond movies that I love and I can watch a million times. But there's also James Bond movies that I watched once and I could never sit through a second time. <laughs> so I'm like, every every franchise has those things. Right. And it's for you as the individual to decide. It didn't doesn't mean you're right or wrong or good or bad you're just you're still a fan i agree you didn't like this one you didn't like this one thing who cares move on Uh, you know it's just that's just how it is i agree but i i don't make i think so you know (laughs) i think you mentioned it some youtube people just you know they go for the clickbait and it's they can sell their anger and their hatred you know towards something that is entertainment and i'm like okay i guess that's that's your thing. You do you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get I get I get sick of watching them. I mean, there's sometimes where I click to see someone's opinion, and two minutes in, it's going so negative. I can't watch the rest yeah. of the ten minute video. I'm like, I'm sorry. I got to turn it off. So you're. I mean, I should. But and it doesn't necessarily so mean. And, and it doesn't. Finish it, but I, that's just I'm me. yeah. But John, I, I I'm okay with you know. I'm okay with criticism. I'm okay with like someone not liking something. I'm okay with a, a lot of it, but like, it's it's when I don't know. There, there's a certain threshold or a certain line where they certain people profess their opinion as though it was fact. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, you know. But this is where I go from a certain point of view, right? You know, or like, well, yeah. okay, but like. It's not. I, I don't know. It's. 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 I'm not. I'm, but the, like, I'm not here to change anybody's mind. I'm not here to say that you're wrong. Just like you. You had said you're wrong for believing a certain way. But like, when you start twisting it in just this this cavalcade of negativity, and and then suddenly everything about it is negative. I'm like, it's impossible. No. Like, I'm sorry, yeah. but no. It, but that's me. That's yeah. me. So. But real quick on Disney Plus. I went through and I've been watching all the Marvel. I went all the way back yeah. to like the those 70s, those 70s Spider-Man cartoons and I've been rewatching the 90s X-Men cartoons. Really? Silver Surfer and wow. a, the 90s Hulk, the 90s Hulk has like an awesome theme song. I was like, yes. <laughs> He's smashing stuff. And, <laughs> I mean like I've been slowly going through like all, all the the Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes and then going into Secret Wars and going into the more right. modern stuff. It's like I am loving how much content for Marvel and oh, Star God. Wars it's with insane. all the stuff that's on there. It's for insane. Me to rewatch and and enjoy. Like I remember when X Men was on. I remember coming home from high school and and it was on. Like I would grab a bowl of cereal at three thirty in the afternoon and watch X Men and then Power Rangers right afterwards. So, you know, it was like so that was like my afternoon with my friend Nofrio and. Now I've got it again. <laughs> it's funny. So, I mean, I'm just geeking out about all this stuff. So, uh, yeah. But, there, there's, you know. A lot more to come, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, but thanks for... Uh, right, man, I, yeah, thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I I think I... I, I know there was probably other things I could say, but I... Oh, I, dude, I, like, I, I know. Kinda... There's probably... Like, there's so much we could have dived into. Like, there's... But, yeah. you know, ultimately it was just a... It was a feel-good film. It was a, it, to me. It was like a summer blockbuster type of film. It was fun. It was fast paced. Yeah. I enjoyed the hell out of it every time I've seen it. I laughed. You know, I I felt like it just it, it resonated with me. Like I just loved it. It was great. I loved yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ditto. Agreed. Did, didn't want it to end. <laughs> Can't wait for the deleted scenes. So. Yeah, it'll be cool to at least watch those, you know, when it comes out on the extras and everything. Yeah, so yeah. I'm sure they'll put it all up on the Disney Plus. Oh, they like will. They did with the other yeah, movies. they will. They will. They got all the deleted scenes for all the other movies on Disney yeah, Plus. Yeah, so they I'm will. I'm sure they'll do it. They will. Guaranteed. They will. For sure. So. Uh, all right, John. I'm going to let you go and then I'm going to wrap up. Yep. All okay, right. Cool. Goodbye, everybody. Sorry, I didn't see the chat, but when when, when I have it, when I'm on the phone and I have it on the TV, I actually don't see Chris's chat there. So. Ooh. But um. Oh yeah, because anyway, it's on the side. Hello to hello to everyone, and I will talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye. See you, John. <laughs> uh, so. 
Thanks for joining. I know it's been a long video, but it's Star Wars, so inevitably it's going to be a very long talk. That's what I used to call sermons in church. I, I grew up Catholic, then I grew up. Uh, the uh, Sorry, that's, that's my thing. Uh, I started watching The Two Popes on Netflix. Got about maybe a quarter way through. I'm like, it's, it's not really working for me. And then the next day, like the Pope slaps a per, like uh, one of his believers. Like, crazy. It, wow. You know I, I must be like getting tired when I've like gone off, come, way off on a tangent. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, could keep probably talking about it all night, so it's good to wrap up. I think we've been talking for about two hours, uh, which is what I would call an average night, talking about Star Wars when I have a chance. Uh, thank you. Uh, I possibly will be back next week, uh, maybe with a mail call. Don't know. Uh, nothing really showed up this week, but we had an opportunity. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, we should probably talk about the the, the, the Rise of Skywalker in my full-on review. Gets a thumbs up for me. That's all I need to say about that. Uh, every, everything about it was just... Meh. Like I did, that's my that's my that that's my review. Uh, I love you. I appreciate you. And at this point, I'm going to leave you to your own devices. And may the force be with you always.